described as a great admirer of Hitler, a cannibal, and a man of violent moods. Today I want to share with you the story of the butcher of Uganda, a man who is one of the craziest dictators that Africa has ever seen, General Idi Amin Dada. I'll rank him above other heartless dictators like Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, Sani Abacha of Nigeria, and even the strong man of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi. Now before I continue, I would like to know your ranking of the worst dictators in Africa in the comment section. Please as you do that, go ahead to subscribe to the channel and leave a heart if you like the video. So let's get into the story of Idi Amin but before then know one thing. His story is often mixed with so much myth. Like there was a claim that at a point when you open his freezer, you would find the decapitated heads of political enemies and people who crossed his path. Okay, if that's not bad enough, there was also the claim that he ate human organs, that he was a cannibal. He was in power for only eight years, but those years are simply horrific and unforgettable for Ugandans. Yes, it is believed that give or take, 300,000 of his countrymen lost their lives during his time in power. Now let's get started with a little of his biography. Idi Amin was born Idi Awo Ango Angu in 1925 in the northwestern part of Uganda, Koboko to be precise. His father was a Roman Catholic before he converted to Islam in the 1910s when he began working with the colonial British army as a burglar. On her part, his mother was a traditional healer who was well respected for what she did. The darkness surrounding the man, Idi Amin, was not something that began when he became a general. It was something that started since he was a little child. At the time, there was a rumor surrounding his paternity, and for his mother to clear her name, the child was forced to undergo a paternity test. He was abandoned in a forest for four days and four nights. Although he survived, his people believed that the only reason why he made it out alive was because he was favored by a sacred seven-headed snake popular in the Kakwa folk religion. The rumors about his paternity did not stop, and ultimately, it led to the divorce of his parents when Idi Amin was only four years old. The kid attended an Islamic school, but records have it that he ended his pursuits in fourth grade. Now, by the mid-1940s, he joined the King's African Rifles of the British colonialists. He made his entry as an assistant cook, but somehow got the chance to start receiving military training. Remember that he only had very little education, but he still rose in military ranks because he was a brave fellow with an uncanny thirst for blood. In a few years, he rose to become a lieutenant, and from there, there was no stopping for him. Are you following? Let's get into our hero's power. Now, Uganda snatched its independence from the British in 1964, and the man, Apollo Milton Obote, became the country's first prime minister, while King Kabaka Mutesa II was named president. Milton and Idi Amin became very close friends and allies. In fact, Amin was one of the key guys of the administration. Before long, a serious scandal broke. Amin and Obote were implicated in a deal to smuggle ivory and gold into Uganda from the Democratic Republic of the Congos. More and more twists came when Obote rushed to suspend the country's constitution and declare himself president. With the help of his friend Idi Amin, the two removed the first president of Uganda, King Mutesa, and they dethroned him as king of Buganda Kingdom. Now, the friendship between Obote and Idi Amin seemed to be going very well until the latter uncovered plans by Obote to have him arrested because he misappropriated funds meant for the army. While that was happening, there was already distrust brewing because Milton had the feeling that Idi Amin was trying to take him out of power. What made the feeling even stronger for him was because there was an attempt that was made on his life and knowing who Idi Amin was, he believed it was his handiwork. As the drama continued to unfold, Obote made a costly mistake. He traveled to Singapore to attend a Commonwealth conference, and Idi Amin, in another of the many stories of betrayals in African politics, orchestrated a grand coup. They pushed aside Milton, and that was how he became president of Uganda. I do not know to what extent the West was involved in the coup, but it was claimed that they helped Idi Amin. Israel was also said to be at the forefront of aiding the coup. Now, whatever the truth might have been, the thing that was undeniable was that the coming of Idi Amin was the birth of real terror never to be forgotten in Uganda. 
the butcher of Uganda began his rule with the massacre of the Acholi and Lango Christian tribes whom he felt were loyal to Milton Obote, but that was only where he began. The man used the country's security forces to hunt and kill those who opposed him. Idi Amin was said to feed his enemies to his crocodiles before keeping their heads in his refrigerator. There were also claims of cannibalism against him, that he ate the organs of those he killed. Now that was only a rumor, but it was claimed that he bragged about it. Apart from the blood on the street, the economy was also witnessing its own massacre. He brought the country's economy to its knees when he sent out the country's Asian population, which numbered close to 80,000 people. This expulsion led to the fall of the manufacturing, agriculture, and commerce of the country. Now, let's not forget that it was reported that Israel helped him in the coup. If that was true, the man beat the finger that fed him. When Big Daddy, as he was called, supported the liberation of the Palestine when it hijacked an Air France flight from Athens to Paris. Not being the one to hold back on a thing like this, Israel sent commandos who invaded the Entebbe International Airport in Uganda and rescued the hostages. Idi Amin lost his mind and killed many airport workers and Kenyans whom he believed aided the Israelis. Another person that he killed for the fallout was a 74-year-old British grandma, Dora Block. Dora was on the flight which was hijacked by the Palestinian terrorists. She was taken to a hospital in Kampala after the hijack, but when the Israelis rescued the hostages, Idi Amin got mad and killed her. Her body was later recovered in a sugarcane plantation. No one was safe from the brutality of Idi Amin, not a 74-year-old grandma, not even students, farmers, or religious leaders. One of the most known religious leaders he assassinated was the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, Janani Luwum. The Archbishop was a strong critic of Idi Amin, and before long, as everyone suspected, he was arrested on charges of treason. Now, the government would later report that the car transporting him and others had a crash, leading to their deaths. But then it was later revealed that his body was riddled with bullets, one passing through his mouth. The man with only a fourth grade education gave himself the elaborate title, His Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal al Haji Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the sea, and the conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general, and Uganda in particular. Just like another poorly educated African dictator, Francisco Macias Nguema, Idi Amin had a great hatred for Western education. He was said to be threatened by intellectuals and so he went after them with brutality. Now if you were thinking that the story of Idi Amin as a family man was going to be different, think again. The former dictator was married to six different women and ended up divorcing four. Although he had as much as 30 children with his wives, the women had to endure so much domestic violence, sometimes in public. There were rumors that Idi Amin was involved in the death of one of his wives, K. Adora Amin, who died in a mysterious manner shortly after their divorce. There are two versions to the story of her death. The first is that she tried committing an abortion and died of bleeding. The doctor responsible for the procedure allegedly dumped her body in the trunk of a car and then he committed suicide. The second story has it that she was kidnapped outside her personal residence in the capital, Kampala, by men who posed as security agents. Her body was later found dismembered. This version of events claims she was murdered by the political enemies of Idi Amin. Now heading into the late 1970s, Big Daddy had forced military men from the southern ethnic groups out of the military. This and many other actions, including fighting his vice and going after many police officials, narrowed his control. He was losing grip of the military and the number of his allies kept dropping. But Idi Amin continued to be Idi Amin. One morning in October of 1978, the butcher of Uganda started a war with Tanzania when he invaded Kagera Salient in northern Tanzania. Although Julius Nyerere was caught by surprise, he fought back and fought hard. He pursued Idi Amin from Tanzania to Uganda. And at the end, Idi Amin had to flee from Kampala in January 1979 and sought refuge in Libya. That was the end of the presidency of General Idi Amin Dada, the butcher of Uganda. From Libya, he moved to Saudi Arabia, where he remained until his death 
in 2003 as a result of multiple organ failures triggered by kidney issues. He was laid to rest in Saudi Arabia. Now is there a story of any African dictator that you will want me to share? Let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe.